It's that time of the year again to give your hard-earned money to the government. Oh, wait, I mean, file your taxes. In this video, I'm going to help you understand what each tax relief category really means and provide you with some tips and tricks so that you can maximize your tax deductions for 2022 legally, which I'm sure will be super useful to you, especially if you are new to these taxation stuff. So before I begin, I assume that you already have a personal income tax account registered with LHDN. If not, there are a lot of videos out there to show you how, so I'm not going to cover that in this video. Ready? Alright, let's jump right into it. Now, many of you are probably new or have been filing taxes for quite a while now, but if you are still unsure how it really works, then you are probably overpaying them. I don't blame you, it takes time to fully understand them, but once you do, you will then know how to fully maximize your savings. Starting from 2015 onwards, if you earn an annual income of 34,000 ringgit after EPF deduction, you will need to file income tax, as long as your income type falls under one of these six categories. But for most people, especially fresh grads, you usually only have a salary or bonus from your your main 9 to 6 job right and that will fall under B gains and profits from employment for example, if your monthly salary is 3,000 ringgit, your gross annual employment income will be 3k times 12, 36,000 ringgit. But that doesn't mean your take home pay is 3,000 ringgit because you still have EPF deduction. So technically, your take home pay or gaji per se is around 2.6k a month. And if you times it by 12, your total annual income is about 31,200 ringgit and you are under the 34,000 ringgit threshold, so you are exempted. But if you have a salary of say 4,000 a month and your take home pay is around 3.5k every month, that makes your annual income after EPF deduction about 42,000 ringgit. So now you will need to pay tax because you now have crossed that 34,000 threshold. Pretty simple, right? Now you can find out what's your chargeable income or also known as the taxable income using this formula. Charge income equals to total gross annual income after EPF deduction minus tax exemption and minus tax reliefs. For tax exemption and tax reliefs, what do they mean? Sure, they may sound the same, but they are actually different. Tax exemptions are income tax that you don't have to pay tax for, such as medical and dental benefits your employer provides, parking allowance, traveling allowances, etc. And they are usually displayed in a separate section in your EA form, in the F field as shown here. And as for tax reliefs, they are money deductions that allow you to reduce your chargeable income, like buying books, sport equipment, medical expenses, etc. Essentially, it's important that you keep track of whatever you spend on as this can ultimately decide what tax rate you will be charged with, which can help reduce the amount of tax you have to pay by a ton. So the more tax reliefs you claim, the lesser tax you pay. Simple logic, right? Now, outside of this equation, sometimes you will also hear about the term tax rebates, which provides rebates for individuals whose chargeable income is below 35,000 ringgit, married couples with joint tax files, and zakat of itra. But tax rebates work differently compared to tax reliefs and tax exemptions because they actually reduce the amount of tax charge at the end and not just your chargeable income. But long story short, once you have your chargeable income, the tax rate you will be charged will increase as your chargeable income does, which is why you should take total advantage of the various tax reliefs offered to lower down your chargeable income amount, which is our main goal for this video. Category number one is individual and dependent relatives. Individual refers to you yourself, whereas dependent are people who depend on you for money and daily expenses like your children, parents or other relatives. And nope, your friends or non-blood related members are not counted. All you need to do is fill up the LHDN e filing form and you will be eligible for an automatic tax deduction of 9,000 ringgit. That's why some of you might even notice that this field will be instantly greyed out, so no action is needed on your end. Easy. Next, medical treatment, special needs and care expenses for your parents. You can claim up to 8,000 ringgit for your birth parents or foster parents if you're adopted who have a medical condition requiring specific treatment, which also must be proven by a certified medical practitioner registered with the Malaysia Medical Council, MMC. The expenses that qualify for tax relief include medical care and treatment provided by a nursing home and dental treatment such as tooth extraction, filling, scaling and cleaning, excluding cosmetic dental treatment expenses such as teeth restoration and replacement involving crowning, root canal and dentures. So if your parents just had their fake teeth made, well, too bad that one cannot claim. One thing to also note is that your parents also need to be individuals residing in Malaysia and the medical treatment and care services also need to be done in Malaysia and not in other countries. So Thailand, India, South Korea, all cannot, okay? 
Hanya di Malaysia. And again, remember to get a letter from a registered medical practitioner to prove that your parents are in need of such treatment or facilities and keep the receipts of the expenses. And if possible, keep a copy of the certification of work permit of the carer as well. They will come in handy when you suddenly kena audit. You never know when they will come knocking on your door and show you yamcha. You know, like yamcha, not as one, Moving on, by purchasing basic supporting equipment for disabled self, spouse, child or parent, you can claim out to 6,000 ringgit as long as the individual is disabled and registered with the Department of Social Welfare Malaysia DSW, or Jabatan Kebajikan Masyarakat JKM. The basic supporting equipment includes a hemodialysis machine, wheelchair, artificial leg and hearing aids. Do note that optical lenses and spectacles are not claimable, but some of you might be able to get this claim from your company's medical benefit instead if they do provide it. So do check your employee handbook or with your HR department if they even exist. Number 4. If you are a disabled person registered under JKM, you are eligible for an extra deduction of 6,000 ringgit, which you can cover for your daily expenses, necessary assistive equipment, care and therapies, and all you need is to present your OKU certificate. Next, if you are still pursuing your studies outside of work, this category will reward you for being a tryhard. You will be entitled to a tax relief of up to 7,000 ringgit if you are paying for your own tertiary or postgraduate education fee, like registration fee, tuition fee, and material fee at a recognized higher learning institution. The criteria include 1. Only undergraduate courses in law, accounting, Islamic financing, technical, vocational, industrial, scientific, or technology are claimable. So if you are pursuing a certificate or diploma, bachelor's degree in say politics, history, literature, basically courses that don't particularly relate to a specific job. Sorry to say that you are not eligible for the education tax relief. 2. Any course of study at a master's or doctorate level is eligible for this relief. So what are you waiting for? Take the MBA course you have been thinking about. But then again, it's going to be a huge sum too. Lah. So think wisely and don't just do it for the sake of tax relief. And thirdly, any courses of study taken on for upskilling or self-enhancement purposes effective from 2021 to end 2022 are claimable, but only up to 2,000 ringgit. Such courses must be recognized under the National Skills Development Act 2006 and you can check out the full list here. Moving on, we have six types of medical expenses which I will be grouping under the same category since they share 8,000 ringgit in tax relief. For serious diseases, the medical expenses that you can claim include treatments for AIDS, Parkinson's disease, cancer, renal failure, leukemia and other similar diseases which I have listed here for your reference. Remember, you will need to keep the receipt of the treatment and a certification issued by a medical practitioner registered with the Malaysian Medical Council MMC. Of course, I hope you don't ever have to claim for any of this lah. Tashwood, tashwood. Under fertility treatment, which basically means the kind of treatment someone would get in order to get pregnant, that includes expenses for consultation and medicines. And the condition is that you and your spouse need to be legally married. And again, your expenses need to be acknowledged by a medical practitioner registered with the MMC. So no marriage cert, no talk. Also, vaccination expenses against diseases for yourself, your spouse or children are also eligible for up to 1,000 ringgit in relief. And you can refer to the list of vaccine types here. For the next subcategories, you also get up to 1,000 ringgit in relief for each of them if you do a full medical body checkup for yourself, your spouse or your children. And if it's only a urine or blood test, then that's not counted. So if you want to be sure, you can always check if your doctor is registered with the MMC through this website. Nice right? Do annual checkups also can claim money back one. And the next medical expense that you can claim for tax relief is for any type of COVID-19 detection test, including the self-test kit that you buy from Watson, Guardian, Lazada, Shopee or just any pharmacy. As for PCR test, which is the one that the doctor pokey pokey into your nose one, you are going to need the receipt issued by a hospital or a clinic. So I hope you still have your receipts. So Ziet, what about purchases of supplements or medicine for my headache that's prescribed by a pharmacist? Can I? Unfortunately, cannot because that is not seen as a serious disease, nor it is prescribed by a doctor recognized by the MMC. And finally, it's also a new addition to the list, mental health examination or therapy consultation for depression, anxiety, stress, etc. So if you have been struggling on this for a while now, why not take this chance to seek help? You can always head to your nearest clinic or government clinic for an evaluation. Sometimes some money cannot save one, you know, just like this one. Now, number eight, a category I believe most of you can relate to, lifestyle purchases, also the category I 
probably spend the most on. You can claim up to 2.5k for personal use by yourself, your spouse or your children, which include items like any reading materials like books, journals, magazines, printed newspaper, of course not banned reading materials like you know what lah. From bookstores like Popular, Books Access etc. or newspaper like The Star, The Age and other publications for the purpose of learning new things. A personal computer, smartphone or tablet, gym memberships or sport equipment, all that good stuff. And speaking of sport equipment, you can claim for the sport equipment that you use, i.e. your dumbbells, golf sets, shuttlecocks, nets, etc. And I know what you're going to ask me. Unfortunately, jerseys, sport shoes, pants, swimsuits are all considered sports attire, so you cannot claim them. And if you are like me and prefer to exercise in the gym, like Celebrity Fitness or Fitness First, then you can also claim your monthly memberships, but not for your club membership which provides gym facilities. For example, your health club and spa at Shangri-La Hotel la, or Rain Tree Club, basically those Atta Social and Leisure Club. La. Those cannot. Lastly, something we all can't live without, the internet. If you are paying for any internet bills that are under your own name, like your Unify, Time, Maxis Fiber Plan etc, you can also claim them as part of the 2500 ringgit relief. Quick pause, if you are enjoying this video so far, you can support this channel for absolutely free by checking out Interactive Brokers in the pinned comment down below. Start trading with the most reputable and well-regulated broker that allows you to trade fractional shares in the US, for which many other stockbrokers don't offer. And the best of all, their fee package is easily one of the cheapest among all other stockbrokers. Thank you so much. Okay, back to the video. Now, on top of the sport equipment claim I've just mentioned, you also have an extra relief of 500 ringgit for sport equipment for any sport activity like badminton, bowling, fencing, football, etc. under the Sports Development Act 1997. Rental or entrance fee of any sport facility, like you rent a badminton court for your weekly match to unleash your inner Lee Chong Wei, and payment for any sports competition that's approved and licensed by the Commissioner of Sports or the Pesuru Jaya Sukan Malaysia. There is also an additional relief for purchases of a personal computer, smartphone, or tablet for up to 2,500 ringgit. Yes, a tip here is that you stack the other deck devices you have bought to this amount. What this really means is that if you bought a smartphone for say 2000 ringgit on 1st March 2021 and also bought a laptop at 2.5k, you can claim that 2000 ringgit from the lifestyle category and the remaining 2.5k from the special relief category. Now, number 10, if you are a mom who is breastfeeding a child aged 2 years and below, you can claim up to 1000 ringgit in reliefs if you have purchased any personal breastfeeding equipment. This deduction can only be made once in every two years of assessment, meaning if you are submitting for assessment year 2022 now, then the next round of submission will be for 2024 instead. Number 11, if you send your children to daycare centers or kindergartens, you can also claim a tax relief that is limited to 3,000 ringgit. But if you and your spouse choose to file separately, this deduction can only be claimed by either one of the child's mother or father only. So divide properly and don't overlap. Also, this relief is not applicable for private kakas or helpers in case you're wondering. And in case you didn't know, SSPN or Skim Simpanan Pendidikan National is a savings plan that encourages parents to invest in their children's higher education. So if you're a parent who makes deposits into the SSPN One Malaysia account, you are eligible for a relief of up to 8,000 ringgit for the annual net deposits, which means the total deposit in 2022 minus total withdrawal. And note that this relief is extended until 2024. Next, if you are divorced, sorry to hear that. I know this sounds odd, but a tax relief of 4,000 ringgit is given only if your ex-spouse who's living together in that assessment year with you has no source of income or has elected for joint assessment in your name and only formal marriage agreements will qualify for this relief, which means if no black and white, then obviously that is not allowed. But if he or she already has a gross monthly income that's more than 4,000 ringgit and paid from companies or business sources outside of Malaysia, then sorry, you cannot claim for this relief. 14. If you have a disabled spouse with a legal marriage certificate, you are entitled to a 5,000 ringgit deduction which is an increase from the 2020's 3.5k in this category. Moving on, if you have kids that are still under the age of 18 and unmarried, basically all of you young parents, gotta make them pay dividends right, you can get a tax relief of 2,000 ringgit for each unmarried child of yours under 18 years old and for parents filing separately, again, this deduction can only be claimed by either the mother or the father only. Time for your kids to head to college or university awesome because for number 15b you can get a tax relief of 8000 ringgit if they're age 18 years and above 
taking up diploma or higher education courses, excluding pre-U courses like metrics, A-levels, foundation, etc., or degree, master's, or doctorate courses in colleges or universities abroad, or any courses at institutions of higher learning recognized by the Ministry of Higher Education, MOHE. By the way, hi auntie and hi uncle. Next, a tax relief of 6,000 ringgit is eligible for parents with an unmarried child who is physically or mentally disabled, no matter their age and the children must be certified by JKM as a disabled person. An additional exemption of 8,000 ringgit is also applicable for an unmarried disabled child receiving a full-time education in Malaysia or overseas. This deduction is an add-on to the disabled child relief if they are 1. Pursuing a higher education full-time for a diploma or higher in Malaysia or undergoing a full-time bachelor's degree program or above outside Malaysia or if they are studying for a profession under a contract with no salary provided, basically some form of apprenticeship where you need to work and study at the same time. Number 16, Life Insurance and EPF. The total relief for the payment of life insurance premiums and contributions to the Employee Provident Fund, EPF, or other approved schemes is limited to 7,000 ringgit for individuals, 3,000 for life insurance premium, and 4,000 for EPF contributions. And to break this down further, retired public servants receiving a pension can claim tax relief of up to 7,000 ringgit for their life insurance premiums or takaful contributions, but they will not qualify for EPF contribution reliefs. But if you are still working and contributing to EPF, you will be eligible for a tax relief of 3,000 ringgit for life insurance premium and up to 4,000 ringgit for EPF self contributions without employer input. And for the purposes of income tax relief claims, you will need to depend on your annual insurance statement to know how much you are entitled to claim for. Most insurers already make this quite easy for you as the statement will break down the amount you can claim under life or medical, also sometimes referred to as medical slash life and others. For example, in this insurance premium paid statement, it states the amount of premium paid for life which is 106 ringgit and 81 cents. And as for the other insurance types like medical and education or things like critical illness, another tip is that you can always park them in the medical and education insurance category which I will be explaining in just a bit. 17. You are eligible for a tax relief limited to 3,000 ringgit if you have made any contributions in any deferred annuity schemes or the PRS, Private Retirement Scheme, up until 2025. PRS is an investment slash saving plan issued by asset management companies where a contribution is similar to unit trust cash investment. After contribution, your money will be separated into two accounts, sub-account A 70% and sub-account B 30% and there are currently 9 available PRS providers such as Affin Huang Asset Management Berhad, AIA Pension and Asset Management Sanjuan Berhad and more in this list here. Personally, I don't really like PRS as an investment or savings vehicle because their historical returns are pretty subpar to the point you might even lose out to inflation. So in my opinion, opinion it's not worth it for the tax relief. You might as well just park into fixed deposits which gives you a better return while not locking up your money until retirement. And as for deferred annuity, it's basically an insurance plan issued by insurance companies and will invest the money for you and guarantee a stream of income to you after certain years. Basically investment link account again lah. But again, subpar products, I might ruffle some feathers but frankly I would avoid them at all costs. Next, you are also eligible for tax relief of up to 3000 ringgit if you pay insurance insurance premiums related to education or medical benefits for yourself, spouse or children, which again you can get the figures from your annual insurance statement. So in this case, I can claim 2,600 ringgit out of the 3,000 ringgit tax relief. 19. If you are a full-time employee in a company, you should also be contributing to SOCSO, Social Security Organization, and with that, you can also claim a relief restricted to 350 ringgit for contributions made to SOCSO for that year. You can get this figure from your EA form from your employer, so remember to check that out. It's basically a free claim. Have you chuti chuti Malaysia a lot in 2022? And if yes, you can claim up to 1,000 ringgit for domestic travel expenses if you stayed at a registered hotel, purchase entrance fees to tourist attractions or tourism packages through low local travel agencies registered with the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture. This relief includes domestic travel expenses incurred during the period between March 1, 2020 until December 31, 2022 and registered hotels and accommodation premises can be checked through their website as well. I'll put a link down below for you to check. Lastly, if you have made it this far, it doesn't make sense if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet. So hit the subscribe button or I won't be sharing with you about number 21, which is about EVs, electric vehicles. According to the Road Transport Department, 
department, JPJ, there are more than 10,000 EVs already registered in the country and the government wants to increase their adoption further. So to do that, a tax relief of 2,500 ringgit is provided for costs relating to EV charging facilities for 2022 and 2023 such as installing, renting, purchasing and leasing of equipment or usage subscription of EV charging facilities. Now I hope that you get a clearer picture of what you can and can't claim. I will also be dropping a list of articles that you can refer to in the description box down below in case you want to double confirm on certain categories. Always, always remember to keep your receipts because when you are audited for whatsoever reason, they will be the only tool for you to defend yourself before you get hit with any penalty. And just for disclaimer purpose, I am not a qualified tax accountant, so do check with one for more appropriate tax advice. Sure, you can be claiming for a lot of things, but also don't purchase them or randomly invest in some lousy retirement schemes or whatever just for the sake of tax relief. I hope you found this video helpful and do share it with your friends and family who are confused about tax reliefs to help them save more money. Thanks for watching and as usual, I will see you in the next one.